A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. Is it the Lord God who helps me? Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you not answered? See how many changes they, charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels, who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him to the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means a place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among him, casting lots to decide which, what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, And Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
be seated. Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday and passion story being told today. How Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem with high praise and proceeds to upset everyone he meets. By Thursday, he is sharing the Passover meal with his friends and introducing a new practice that we call the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion or Eucharist. By Friday, he is hanging on a cross dead. And then it's Saturday, and all is quiet, and the tomb is sealed, and death is confirmed. By Sunday, he is risen, the tomb is empty, and the followers of Jesus are perplexed. A friend of mine refers to this week as launching Jesus. I thought that was kind of funny. So I looked at, well, what does it mean to launch something? To throw or propel with force, hurl, to set or thrust in motion. To set going, initiate. To introduce to the public or to the market. To give someone a start, as in a career, a vocation. To begin a new venture or phase to embark to enter enthusiastically into something, to plunge. As a pastor or a hard-working volunteer, Holy Week can feel like we are doing the launching of Jesus. But honestly, I think this week is more about Jesus launching us. That we may plunge deeper, remember enthusiastically the story of our faith. Holy Week launches the Jesus in us. Now back to the Holy Week days. I love Saturday. I love the quiet and the unknown of living in the in-between. I believe that is the greatest witness of experiencing the already not yet that we live in our faithful living. We experience the suffering and the struggle of life's trials. We lift our crosses to bear. Yet we know that the cross is not all that there is. So in that quiet, in that in-between time, we live in hope. Hope of new beginnings and second chances and perseverance. Saturday is the interim of the Jesus launching in us. We sometimes quiet our lives down enough to be with our Saturday experience. So that is my challenge for you. Next Saturday, quiet down. In years past, I've dedicated the day to 24-hour prayer vigil, which was the tradition in Christianity. My friends and I would divide up the day into time slots during which we slowed down and prayed. Give yourself intentional moments to be with the unknown, the discomfort, the calm, and the silence of Saturday between death and resurrection. A time to pray, a time to breathe, a time to plunge into your faith. This Saturday will end with an Easter vigil is the tradition, and we'll be having one here. Easter vigils begin in darkness. A torch is lit, and we follow the light to proclaim Christ has risen, that there is light in the darkness, 
We participate in readings that tell the story of our faith. We remember our baptism. And then we light brightly the, the church with Easter decorations. And we share in a Holy Communion. And we cry out in a full chorus, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. So this week, be ready. Take time. Take the silence as a gift. The slowing down, the quiet, as a gift. It's very similar to the time you're in as a church. It's a gift, a gift to truly live into who you are as a congregation and as a people and as a church launching the Jesus in you. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, help us to take up our cross and follow you. You stood before Pilate, your life condemned, your word rejected, your innocence ignored. Keep us from rejecting your word of truth and salvation. 
You carried your cross on the wounded stripes of your back for love of us and for all the world. Help us to bear our cross for love of you and for love of others. The weight of your cross was the weight of our sins, which make us stumble and fall. In our weakness, we turn to you for strength. Although you suffered, you still reached out to care for your mother. May our cross bearing never keep us from caring for our families. As you struggled to bear your cross to Calvary, a passerby was drafted to help you. Make us as willing as Simon to bear the burdens of those in need. Others also took risks to comfort you. Strengthen our faith to take loving risks for our needy brothers and sisters. Sin weighed heavily upon you as you stumbled along the way. Forgive us, Lord, for the sins which make us fall. Your suffering under the cross caused the women of Jerusalem to weep. Make our suffering in life a share in your suffering. The full burden of our sin crushed you mightily to the earth. Do not forsake us in our calling, but bring us to repentance and faith. Stripped and jeered, you endured humiliation without complaint. Humble us in our work and daily lives. Nailed to the cross, you took your place among the condemned. Take your place beside us sinners and bring us through faith to the paradise of God. When your sacrifice was complete, you handed your life to the Father, and he did not forsake you. He keep us close to your cross and death, now and at the hour of our death. Faithful friends and loving women took loving care of your lifeless body. Turn the darkness of death into the brightness of day for those we love. In the tomb you were laid, but from the tomb you arose. Be the Lord and resurrection for us. Loving Jesus, for the sake of your cross and passion, we are justified in faith, washed clean of our sins by baptism and repentance, and made one with God. We thank you for your cross and for the depths of your love for us. Help us to bear our cross in the world and follow you until you bring us into your heavenly kingdom, where you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take this time to share the peace with one another.
Merciful God, Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. The meal is prepared, and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. You will commune along the railings, either stand or kneeling. You'll receive the bread, and then either the dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice, and gluten-free elements are available. Come, let us eat. The meal is prepared.
invite you to stand as you are able and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be a hunger for justice, our alms a making for peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn your attention to the messenger, and there will be a meeting between services today for a safe to sleep house, and I uh, encourage you to attend that and learn more about that mission of Messiah. And also, uh, do you want to say anything about Appalachia? No? Okay. Uh, just let you know that is happening. If you're interested, let Scott know. First Communion, there is this Thursday, and that will be at the 7 o'clock service. There is also a 12 o'clock noon service on Monday, Thursday. Um, there'll be two different types of services, so you're welcome to come to either one or both if you want. Um, on Good Friday, we will have an Easter vigil. I'm sorry, on Good Friday, we will have a cantata uh, with Tenebrae service at 7 o'clock, and then on Saturday, we'll have an Easter vigil at 5.30, and then next Sunday morning, we will have an 8.30 traditional worship, 11 o'clock contemporary worship for Easter. There's still a little time to order Easter flowers, and I believe those order forms are out there. Any other announcements, um, you can refer to the messenger. I invite you to please stand, receive the benediction. You will note that we have no closing hymn, and this is uh, because we are beginning Holy Week. I almost said launching. We are uh, beginning our Holy Week, and so at the dismissal, um, the ministers and I will leave and then you may come as you wish you may take time for quiet if you like or um, uh, go to fellowship may god who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light strengthen you in your journey in life renewed the lord bless you and keep you the lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy and the lord look upon you with favor and give you peace Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>